Hey there, I'm Michael, and this is a paid preview of The Pirate Republic by Greenfeet Games, a game of 18th century pirates doing exactly what you would expect them to do. In this game, each player will take on the role of a famous pirate captain, which dictates their starting deck of 12 cards, two of which will be unique to them. You then decide if you're going to play fully cooperatively or competitively. If cooperatively, you will be working together to complete a flying gang mission. If competitive, you don't have this shared mission. Instead, each pirate is out to get the most swagger they can. On your turn, you will sail around the Caribbean islands, freely choosing where you go and what to attack, starting with rolling the sailing die, which modifies your movement value or causes enemies to appear. It could be merchant ships or even pirate ships not belonging to the flying gang and represented by round tokens. Or you could try to attack towns on the land, turning over a square token and fighting a port or fort. Whatever you attack, if successful, you will gain rewards from the token. This could be reputation tokens that will allow you to boost the effects of some cards or it could even add new, better cards to your deck for you to use. Likely it'll also give you swagger, which as well as helping you win in a competitive game, also acts as a sort of experience points in both game modes. When your swagger reaches certain amounts, you'll level up, which can give you new cards and even increase your hand limit. Another way to gain swagger in the game is to complete these captain's missions that represent random objectives for you to complete. While you're doing all this, the person to your right is going to be paying very close attention because they will have a chaos card. These say on them the conditions for when they trigger and if they do, your turn will be interrupted with the text read out and it will then affect your turn in some unforeseen way. Playing the Pirate Republic, there are two games that instantly stand out as influences and inspiration for the game. The Chaos cards are highly reminiscent of the Crossroads cards from Dead of Winter, with how they function and how they affect the game. They could be good, they could be bad, you just never know, and they could trigger at any time. Plus, you each have personal missions, including the possibility of saboteurs. However, the biggest influencer has to be Mage Knight the board game. They both have randomised enemies using tokens, personal decks that control when rounds end, and levelling up during play, adding cards to your decks. Something new this game brings is what it calls its artificial intelligence engine. What it comes down to is your actions have consequences such as kill six merchants and royal navies get called in to protect the seas, or attacking the land causes deadly pirate hunters to appear. The game has a high replay value, with no two games playing the same way. Several elements add to this. Firstly, there's the different game modes, giving two different ways to play. And secondly, there's the random elements of the game. You have random enemies, you've got random card draws, and luck of the dice when sailing or fighting. The cooperative mode then increases this with the random team missions and the potential for saboteurs. The strategy in this game all comes from the choices you make. Where do you choose to sail to? What do you choose to fight and how? Or do you seek refuge on land to mitigate the risk of the sailing dice? The choice is yours. So in summary, if you like the idea of a pirate themed game, of exploring the Caribbean, attacking all in your path, with the potential of betrayers, then the Pirate Republic is a game you should take another look at. Okay, I do hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you have, please do check out the rest of the videos on the channel, as well as subscribing and sharing the channel. And as always, thanks for watching, and bye for now.